Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is on linguistics. So, as you all know, linguistics is the scientific study of human language. So, it is called a scientific study just because it entails a comprehensive, systematic, objective and precise analysis of all aspects of language, particularly its nature and structure. So, you all know that linguistics is concerned with both the cognitive and social aspects of language. So, now our topic is Ferdinand E. Sassur's course in general linguistics. So, let's uh, get introduced to the author. So, being a Swiss linguist, Ferdinand D. Sassur is identified as one of the founders of 20th century linguistics. So, I mean, the scientific study of language. He is the one who laid the groundwork for structuralism and post-structuralism. In the years 1907, 1908 to 1909, and 1910 to 1911, he actually offered free courses in general linguistics at the University of Geneva. And in those courses, he had activated an approach to languages as a system of signs, each sign consisting of a signifier, that is, a sound pattern, and signified, that is, the concept. So here, when it comes to this particular text, course in general linguistics, Ferdinand D. Sassur has uh, actually summarized his lectures at the University of Geneva from 1906 to 1911. So here we could find that Sassur uh, examines the relationship between speech and the evolution of language and investigates language as a structured system of science. Well, so here uh, I have just laid out the basic Sassurian concept. So, we will discuss about the key talking points here. So, the picture here depicts how an abstract mental concept is expressed in material form through a sound image. So, what do you mean by a sound image? It can be an utterance or it can be a written word or even a picture. So, the mental concept is called the signifier. Got it? And the material sound image is uh, better known as the signifier. Meaning is then further in the process of signification. So here, these are the basic concepts that you have to keep in mind before exploring the text. I mean, the concept which is uh, called as the signifier and the sound image that is uh, identified as the signifier. Well, so here, in the very first part of this particular text, I mean language as organized thought coupled with sound, right? So this is the very first part of the text. And uh, here, language is identified as a system of pure values. So here we could see that through Sasur, two elements are involved in the functioning of a language, got it? Ideas and sounds. So thought, as Sazur says, is a shapeless and indistinct mass. Only with the help of science, the possibility of making a clear, consistent distinction between two ideas happen, says Sazur. So he again confirms or affirms that thought is actually a vague, uncharted nebula. So what do you mean by a nebula? Nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. So something that is very much vague and uncharted, is it not? So nothing is clear and distinct before the appearance of language affirms Sassur. So here, when he talks about the sound or the phonic substance, right? So here, according to Sassur, the sound or the phonic substance is neither fixed nor more rigid than the thought. So here, when he talks about the phonic substance, he says that the phonic substance is not a mold, but instead a plastic substance, which is further divided into distinct parts to furnish the signifiers needed by thought. So here, we could find that 
Sasur ushers us that language is a common series of sequential subdivisions. Got it? So here, let's look into the characteristic role of language as put up by Sasur. So as he says, uh, language uh, serves as a link between thought and sound. Sasur says that language is really a borderland between thought and sound, where thought and sound combine to provide communication. So language, as he says, that is chaotic by nature, is to become ordered in the process of its decomposition. So the language works out on the two shapeless masses. So he says that the two shapeless masses are thoughts and sound. So according to him, uh, language is uh, really a borderland that is coming between thought and sound. And it is where thought and sound combine to provide some kind of a communication. So uh, he, uh, he very strongly asserts that language is the domain of articulations. On the whole, linguistics work in the borderland where elements of sound and thought gets combined. Got it? So here you could have understood the characteristic role of language. So now talking about the linguistic signs. What are the linguistic signs? Signify and the signifier, isn't it? So an understanding of sign is very important before getting to know what is arbitrariness, a very important concept uh, philosophized by Sasur. So linguistic sign, what is that? It is a combination of concept and sound pattern. So concept, otherwise called as signified, is related to what we talk about an object. So what do you mean by sound pattern that is otherwise called a signifier? Yes, just concentrate. So sound pattern or the signifier is not the physical sound, got it? The sound pattern or signifier is not the physical sound, but the psychological impression or understanding of the hearer. So here, Sasur states that a sign is a unit comprised of signified and signifier. Got it? So now let's uh, look into arbitrariness, the very first principle of linguistic sign. So arbitrariness is the very first theory of Sazur on linguistic sign. The link between signifier and signified is arbitrary, says Sesur. So here, the signified and signifier are purely psychological, he says, and they are forms rather than substance, asserts Sesur. So arbitrariness of sign means there is no logical or intrinsic relationship between signifier, I mean sound pattern, or signified, I mean concept. Got it? So here comes the second part of the text. What is that? Linguistic value from a conceptual viewpoint. And here, let's see about the linguistic value, which can be viewed as a quality of the signify, the signifier or the complete sign. So here, what do you mean by a linguistic value? A linguistic value is viewed as a quality of the signify, the signifier or the whole linguistic or complete a linguistic sign. So the linguistic value of a word, I mean the signifier, comes through its correspondence to a certain concept that is called as signify. So listen carefully. The value of a concept, I mean the value of a concept, erupts from its relationship with other concepts. The value of the sign in whole, I mean the value of the linguistic sign in whole comes from the relationship or the combination of the sound images or signified and the concept or signifier, right? So the value of a sign grows in relation to its external environment and not from its internal components. So linguistic signs gain value in two distinct ways, got it? Linguistic signs on the whole gain value in two distinct ways. What are those? Conceptually, and materially uh, states Sasur.
will. So what are the factors necessary for the existence of a value? A dissimilar thing that can be uh, can be exchanged for the thing of which the value is to be determined. So here, let me tell you an example as it is in the text. So here, for example, a coin worth 10 rupees or 10 francs or 10 dollars can be exchanged for a fixed quantity of a different thing, isn't it? Maybe it can be uh, a loaf of bread or maybe a chocolate, or maybe a piece of cake, or maybe even some stationery that you could get. So here, similarly, a word can be exchanged for a dissimilar idea. So its value is no longer fixed as it can be exchanged for a given concept as you exchange your 10 rupees for a loaf of bread or even a chocolate. I'm sorry, you can't get a loaf of bread for 10 rupees now, is it not? Well, okay. So now uh, here there are a few examples of linguistic uh, value of words in dissimilar languages. So here, for example, uh, the modern French word mountain uh, is of the same signification as the English sheep, but uh, not the same value. So mutton in English refers to a piece of meat ready to be served on table. In this context, English uses mutton and not sheep. No one says that, come on, you can have feed on the sheep. Does anyone say that? No, isn't it? We use the word mutton. So here there is difference in value between mutton and sheep just because sheep has a second term left out, whereas the French word doesn't. So here, these are the examples of linguistic value of words used in dissimilar languages. Uh, kindly concentrate and listen again, you would get to know. Right. So linguistic value of words in the same language. So here, all words words are used to express related ideas. The value of any word in the same language is determined by its environment. For example, even the value of the word sun is impossible to be fixed because the value of the word signifying sun without looking into the surrounding will sound futile. See, in some languages, uh, there are no possibilities of saying sit in the sun, as we say in English. So these are the differences. So here you could find the relative or related ideas uh, that are determined by the very environment. Yes. Now comes the third part of the text. What is that? Linguistic value from a material point of view. Well, so a word is not just a sound right but the phonic differences that it evokes upon kindly keep this in mind a word is not just a sound is it not it is the phonic differences that it evokes upon so here the differences carry signification or the process of signification arbitrary and differential are the two correlative qualities that Sasur points out Sasur explains the systematic role of phonic differences a linguistic signifier right is not just phonic but has a material substance that actually brings in all the difference as that separates a mice from a dice got it so sound is a material element and Sasur argues that it is impossible for sound alone to belong to a language Sound is only a secondary thing to be put in use. For example, it is not the metal of a coin that fixes its value or paints a sur. A coin normally worth five francs may contain less than half its worth of silver. See, the value of the coin varies according to the amount stamped upon it. So it is only the uh, amount stamped upon the coin gives its value. Likewise, a linguistic signifier is not just phonical, but corporeal, not essentially consist constituted only by its material substance, but by the differences that separates the sound image from all others. Got it? So now comes the fourth part of the text. I mean, the sign considered in its totality, right? So in language, there are only differences. On taking the signifier and the signified, 
language has neither ideas nor sounds that existed below before the linguistic system but only the conceptual and phonic differences that have been issued from the system so when the signify and the signifier are considered separately everything in language is negative right everything in language is negative and when we consider the linguistic sign in its totality or in its whole, uh, wholesome way it is positive in its own accord a linguistic system is a series of differences of sound that is combined with a series of differences of ideas though both the signified and the signifier are purely differential and negative when considered separately the total combination and totality is a positive fact sesu concludes that maintaining a parallel contrast of two classes of differences is the distinctive function of the linguistic sign got it so here with this fourth part the text comes to an end and i hope you would have understood the uh, text and uh, here thank you so much for uh, listening and uh, do listen again for uh, proper understanding or comprehension so those who haven't subscribed it do subscribe thank you this is wahida signing off mm -hmm.